Hi everybody, it's Jamie Nodder from Culture That Works and our new company called WorkXO here in Washington, D.C. And you are watching Six Degrees of Association with Sarah, Rob, and Andrew. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Six Degrees of Association. You came back and we couldn't be happier. We are the only online TV show that's dedicated to association success. Once again, I'd like to welcome our lovely panel for today. We've got Rob Barnes from Aptify. Thank you, Sarah. And also Andrew McCullum from Fitness Australia. Thank you, Sarah. Great. So just to set the scene for everyone who's only joining us for the first time, each episode of this TV show contains feature stories, regular segments, and everything needed to bring associations into the 21st century. So first of all, I'd just like to go through some feedback from our last uh -oh. or our first episode. Feedback. Dun, 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 dun. We are open to feedback, apparently. <laughs> just some questions, yeah. really, um, just on some of the things that we actually spoke about, um, really regarding the main area of topics. So Rachel M, she said she loved the show. What are your actual thoughts on member levels? So we're talking gold, silver, bronze. Wow. I want two minutes. Max. I kind of feel like mem <laughs> membership levels is uh, the old school. Yeah. Uh, but I guess, look, at, at the end of the day, how you package it is going to be based on how you, how you, what you know about your own industry or profession. You know, yep. I think, I think mostly associations membership offering yep. needs to reflect the way their, their actual industry or professions sell their right. products and services into the community. Okay. I'd take a slightly different view, Rob. Wouldn't be the first time, but... It wouldn't, no. I tend to think, you know, if you have categories of whether it's gold, silver, bronze, level one, two or three, you're at risk of categorising and really pigeonholing your members into mm. certain categories. So you will take get these benefits because you're a gold member or if you don't want those benefits, you will get these ones because mm. you're a silver or a level two, whatever it might be. I think, you know, in building flexibility into a model is desirable. And I think yep. by doing that, allowing that, the member really decides what they want to get out of the association. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. People are used to choosing their own adventure in the yep. 21st century. You can do it just about anywhere else. Yep. Associations have to learn to adapt to that. Yeah. I love the iPhone model, isn't it, really? You know, yeah. everyone buys the same product out of the box. A week later, no two are the same. Different apps, different backgrounds, different, mm. different wallpapers. And I think, you know, membership should aspire to deliver on that sort of flexibility for associates. So there you are, Rachel M. You need the iPhone model of yes. membership packages. <laughs> iPhone model. And from Darren H. So our last, we our last time we actually spoke about the Uber versus taxis uh, uh, yes. situation that happened. That was yeah. a massive thumbs down from you. So do you have any ideas on how they could have done it better? Why well, first... My first thing is that I can't believe that taxis didn't see the taxi councils didn't see this coming. For yeah. them to, to for them to be in a situation where they felt like their monopoly was going to last forever mm. and not see that the entire world around them has changed, that's where the fail happened. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I mean Uber was came into Australia three, four years ago possibly and still they're saying, you know, pretending this isn't happening, they're, yeah. you know, making arguments about passenger safety and so forth. But, you know, I mean, one thing I think, and not necessarily the taxi councils, but I look at Cab Charge in Australia. Yeah. I mean, Cab Charge are a multi-million dollar organisation, have made tremendous profits over the last three years. Why not invest some of that profit back into making a payment gateway, replicating some of the, some of the, the payment methods that makes Uber so successful. Mm. You know, that to me is where, not the taxi council itself, but you know, the role of the taxi council is to introduce and to encourage this mm. sort of development for its members. So yeah, I think they, uh, there are a lot of fails, uh, to use your term, that we could, that could have been done a lot better here. But for Darren's benefit, I mm. think the key lesson here for associations is you need to be paying attention to yeah. what is outside your association. Yeah. The world has changed dramatically. It's a bit like the, you know, there's a great story online about the um, the necktie association, association for people who made and sold neckties, who all of a sudden looked around their boardroom table and realised that no one was wearing a necktie. Mm. No one had paid attention to the fact that times had moved on. We're not in old England anymore. You just anymore. get so into it, don't you? That's exactly yeah. right. So that's really the lesson for most associations: yeah. is the, the paying attention to what's going on in society and how it's impacting what what you guys are doing. 
great. I want to put them in for a future segment, I think. Necktie Association. Thanks for that one. We need to pick that one up, yeah. Yeah, good work. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> so, also, we had some very attentive people in the first episode, it seems. So, Andrew, did you get bikes for your bell or bell for your bikes? I th my intent was to get a bell for my bike, and I can say the two are suitably attached now. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for our uh, very attentive uh, viewers as well for picking that up. Anytime you want me to bring anything like that up, just let me know. I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, bikes for our bells. You're going to leave fast for the There's an episode title yeah, 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 in that, exactly. I'm sure. Bikes for our bells. At least you know we're not editing too heavily. <laughs> so now we get to the fun part, my most favourite part of the actual show. And this is a segment we like to call Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down. So we have our two panellists talk about some association that they've even given a thumbs up or a thumbs down to in the past few weeks. So let's start with you, Rob. Thanks. Who does your thumbs up go to? Well, thanks. So um, as is probably expected in, uh, I, I've not chosen an association for my thumbs up, but I tell you, so. Oh, this is awkward. I, I know, all, all of a sudden, but I tell you, so. You're on top of the episode content, aren't you, Rob? I've got the, I've, look, I've got the run sheet here. <laughs> okay, I'm cool. Good. But there's, there's, a, there's a really great book um, that, uh, so some people that I know quite well, uh, I would tend to call them friends, Andrew, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, um, Jamie Notter and Mandy Grant have written a book, uh, it was released late last year, and um, it's called When Millennials Take Over. And I think that it's the first time I've, uh, I've actually seen and read a book that talks about this subject, you know, this generational yeah. kind of subject in a way that's a user guide. And while it's not directly aimed at associations as such, there's so much in here that impacts associations. Okay. That the, and the way it's been written yeah. is a real user guide that I think association um, executives could get a great deal out of. So they talk about what I love about society is like the, you know, the ridiculously optimistic future of business. Mm. And um, associations are in business. Yep. They're in business to turn their surpluses into effort and value for their members. And it, the impact of the workforce being dominated by millennials mm. is right now is starting to have a material effect. So um, the book itself uh, identifies um, what Jamie and Maddie call, um, uh, I, I guess they're these values that, that, that define what the future of business is. Digital, mm -hmm. clear, fluid and fast. Okay. And when I think about that as a, a mantra, as you know, I'd love to know a 21st century association that says, you know what, we need a new constitution. And the constitution is about digital, clear, fluid and mm. fast. Imagine mm. a business plan that talks about how will we be digital, clear, fluid and fast in the 21st century and its relationship to the people who are going to be working mm. in our association. So big thumbs up Great. to Jamie, Jamie Notter and Maddie Grant for this book. Uh, it's a real user guide for how we can do better. It has um, a, a great impact on association mm. management, I feel. So, yes, it's a little bit off script. It's not an association, yeah. but it's for association, so okay, I'm running with we'll it. we'll let you off. Mm. Thumbs down. Everybody else I've ever seen present about generations. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jeez, it's casting uh, a wide net. Uh, I, it, it is. I've seen, look, I've seen some good yeah. presentations about the impact of the generations. Uh, but I'm kind of tired of seeing the same chart saying, mm. hey, this is what baby boomers are, and this is what Gen X is, and this is what... I just don't think people relate to that. They don't mm. often see themselves as that person and like being typecast, mm. if you like. And I do feel like I know millennials, Gen Ys, whatever, mm. that are not... that don't behave and yeah. don't have those kind of traits that they're being sort of labelled with. So if there's anything that we could do better as associations is perhaps stop trying to do this demographic research and anything that just labels people. Mm. I think people are, I don't know. You get tired of it. A little sick of being yeah. uh, being labeled in a way that's so generalist uh, in, a, in, mm. in, a, in its view because there are people are different and we as associations need to be able to cater for, for the way people see us, mm -hmm. not us make decisions on how people um, you know, should be defined by us. Anyway, so I'm just a little, you know, I'd love to see some different work mm. and, and in contrast to the way Jamie Notter and Maddie Grant wrote in their book, mm. that's the sort of presentation that I think associations need to be seeing. Okay. Not some of these charts. So thumbs down for some of the generational presentations yeah. that I've seen being presented to associations. Any, yeah, and any comments on that, guys, uh, feel free to hashtag 6DA and let us know. Uh, or even if you've read the book or even heard of the book, that would be great as well. Over to you, Andrew. Once again, I'll try and keep this brief, uh, <laughs> unlike my fellow panellist here. I, I've got to give a wrap. I'll, Museums Australia and their New Zealand equivalent, I'll do my best museums, Aotearoa. Not bad. 
thank you. Uh, these two bodies are combining resources to host a joint museums Australasia conference for the first time mm -hmm. in May this year. Early indications are that they're going to more, almost triple the uh, delegate numbers they have traditionally got for their wow. respective conferences. So by combining the two, they're obviously delivering a fantastic outcome for their members. Mm -hmm. The members are voting with their feet. Um, and pursuing a joint opportunity, which is delivering great outcomes for That'd both associations. That'd have to attract some international interest too, I'd imagine. I'd That'd imagine. Be, yeah. 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 So, yeah. And obviously with a greater presence than would previously for two different con conferences. So, mm. Fantastic account. So thumbs up to uh, those Museums Australia, and I won't try the New Zealand equivalent for a second time. I'll <laughs> rest on my laurels the first time. Um, again, I'll bit of a thumbs down. I read with interest Association Forum's 2015 board survey. Um, interesting, one finding in there, 42% of boards take part in some sort of board performance evaluation or you know, critical, uh, critical assessment of their mm. effectiveness as a board. And this right. staggered me. 42%, less than half of boards in Australia are actually undertaking some form of wow. board review. Now, I mean, if I'm a board member, I, I, my expectation is that the staff working for my organ the organisation I'm a representative of, I want all of them having some form of regular evaluation, mm. regular feedback from a manager. And the fact that only less than half of boards are getting that sort of participating, what's a pretty basic fundamental exercise in, in performance enhancement, to me it's a really disappointing... I'm, surpri I'm surprised you're surprised. You're surprised I'm surprised? <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. I didn't say I was surprised. Perhaps disappointed is uh, where, where yeah, I'm going I, here. But, I, I, uh, think, I think that board self-reflection board yeah. self-evaluation like you and I both know how hard it is to and it's often driven by the executive team right it's like well we have to be evaluated we want mm. everybody it's a culture of reflection and feedback and the mm. like performance enhancement trying yeah. to get I mean and the board members are saying well I just volunteer for this mm. I mean I don't need performance reviews in my voluntary role as well as in my sort of work role so yeah. I'm not surprised by it yes maybe disheartened that mm that feedback and self-reflection and these things aren't part of board culture, particularly when you have AICD you know, providing mm. training, which has a lot of this embedded in it now. And, and AICD training is almost compulsory for board members these days. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's a big part of it. So, so yeah, so certainly surprising. worthy of a yeah. thumbs down. Um, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Most definitely. OK, now we get into the next part, which is the lunchtime special. This week we're actually going to be talking about associations and competitions. So I'm going to hand it over to Andrew and Rob for the next four minutes to talk about the topic. Do associations do competition well? Sarah said four minutes. Four minutes. Have I ever spoken for four minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Several times. Yeah. <laughs> Just many times over. Yeah. I think this is, a, this is an interesting talk to me. You know, I, I see it a lot. You know, associations, they tend to take something of a bit of an almost moral high ground as though, you know, well, we're doing this for you. You're our members. Why are you? Why would you go somewhere else? Uh, right. And and I think it's almost something. There's a feeling that some associations they almost they feel they should have an immunity from competition in a commercial space, mm -hmm. unless unless there is a very specific competition that's in place. So you see, uh, and, and at some stage, there's a historical split. You know, at some point that there's been a professional college or something then there's been a massive disagreement between two segments and it's actually split into two different associations so there's inherent competition mm. in that which you know which has its own troubles but I, I, I get where you're coming from like the, the concept of well we are the professional society for X mm. nobody you else is going us. to do business in this space because why would anybody else want to try but yeah. that's not the point, is it? No, and it's almost, it's, it's, it's one side is competition with another association, another professional body, yeah. and then there's yeah. competition in that commercial space of, well, we're going to invest for our members, we're going to deliver a commercial outcome for our members that's going to deliver revenue for the association, deliver benefits for our members, and that level also, there's sort of that, you know, it's almost an implied uh, obligation that the member has to, well, because our association is delivering this on this business proposition, we should support it. There's and a lot. Associations sometimes feel that. I agree. I, th I think there's less, there's not enough attention paid to what the sector or just what the business environment is with that surrounds that profession or mm. that industry. Yeah. So where, if you're a trade association and your members are large corporates you know in whatever sector it might be the association itself may not be paying enough attention to where else those companies are getting value where are they getting value in terms of their legal services and industrial relations advice where else are they getting because that's what they're competing with mm. and if they're not seeing that or if they're 
if, if our associations continue to do the old oh, woe is me kind of, well, we're just a not-for-profit or we, yes. are just a, we can't deliver that, well, that's bollocks. I think in the 21st century there are plenty of... Competition's an inevitability. It simply doesn't go away. Just ask the taxi council, right? <laughs> it wasn't paying enough attention to the fact that... Yeah, and I think the, the, the challenge is, and perhaps harking back to what, what Jamie Nodder and Matty Grant are talking about, is there is no such thing as not competition for millennials who are making decisions these days, right? I mean, right now, I would hazard a guess that you could set up a new membership organisation, regardless of whether it's not-for-profit or a membership-based mm. organisation, from your mobile phone in less time than it takes to have a board meeting and probably have more followers, more members, may be willing to pay things. Like, yeah. in less than a day, you could do that and you can do it from a device you can hold in your hand. Mm. Our associations are running constitutional, you know, organisations yeah, that have been around for however long. It's just crazy. Hmm. It's a board meeting. We're having a board, we'll discuss that at the next board meeting in two months' time. Even no, the it's concept... It's not conducive to commercially viable, successful organisations, is it? The concept, I think, uh, Jeff DeCania talks about this a little bit about when he talks about the principles of, you know, sort of governance into the future or governing for the loss of control, he calls it. And it's this concept that eight people... 12 people, 19 people elected, mm. appointed to sit around a table can make decisions that are in the best interests of 20, 30,000 30, members. Who they never met. Who they they never, it, it's crazy in the 21st century because the internet allows those 20,000 members to talk amongst themselves from their phones anytime they like without any reference to the association whatsoever. Mm. That's where the competition is happening and yet it is rarely on the agenda of most boards, most boards and associations. It's like the old, the old selling point of an association where we offer networking opportunities. You know, really? Facebook offers networking opportunities too. But yeah. you know, you don't necessarily need to join you to get that sort of benefit, is it? Okay, my turn. Sorry, guys, time's up. <laughs> Thank you for that. Do we so we get, say we, they do, it, they started. don't do it well. <laughs> No. Okay. I think they can do it a lot better. <laughs> okay, we're almost at the end of our 22 minute mark. So now, the next section is where we talk about associations and there really is an association for everything. Today we're going to be spotlighting the Association for Pet Obesity Prevention. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you, and I uh, love this segment. And, and this segment's about you know highlighting these great associations. It's certainly trying to, and you know I love the fact there is an association for everything and we're certainly uh, endorsing these organisations that we mentioned. But yes, the Association for Pet Obesity Prevention, or APOP, as, I, as I've turned them, they were founded in 2005, headquartered in North Carolina, and have a membership made up of very dedicated veterinarians, uh, animal health practitioners of various levels, and they're dedicated, committed to making the lives of dogs, cats, all other domestic pets healthier and more vital. But there is a serious side to APOP as well, and that is that they are also promoting parallel weight loss between pets and pet owners. So we don't want an unhealthy dog, nor do we want an unhealthy owner of that unhealthy dog, clearly. Um, so to the good people of APOP, proud to salute you this week. Uh, the fine work you're doing on behalf of dogs, cats, and their unhealthy owners everywhere, and we appreciate you being a part of this segment. Good job. I yeah. Love, yeah, I love that. That's great. Team. A pop. A pop. A -pop. Love it. A pop. To it's the just friends. great how they blend in animals with their owners. And it's, it's been a while since I've heard an association founded in 2005. Like yes. so, it's so it's so recent. So that's great news. Yeah, yes. crazy. Love to hear from someone at A pop. I'd love yeah. to see someone at A pop. Yeah. Yes. Sounds good. Okay, guys, we're now at the two-minute warning, sorry. Um, so this is a part where we actually take your feedback, pose it to our panel, talk about anything that's come through our Twitter feed as well, which is hashtag 6DA. So first of all, from Tim D 98 great show, guys. Any plans for any guest speakers in the future? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. As soon as one accepts our many invitations, I think, uh, or returns our calls, one of the two. Well, I think one of the plans for the show was always to be um, at some of the key association events yes. and take the show yep. on the road. And thanks to the help of the guys at Redback Conferencing, we, mm. we're going to be able to do that. Mm. And so Looking when we're there, we've got access to some of the people yep. that we'd love to have. And yes, invitations yeah. are out there. We'd love to have some panellists come on and join us and do their stuff live. 
Great. And we're open to ideas or anyone who you think maybe is doing really, really well in the space and mm. you want to get them online, feel free to let us know and we can make contact with them and make it happen because that's what we do, right? Yeah, Just that's make it. it. We make it happen, make it happen. <laughs> um, so minutes. Nelson456, love the shirts. So great work on the shirts, well, guys. Yeah, uh, Sarah, I think, I think they so. look I don't, really I good. I can't take any credit on the shirts. No, no, I think that's all So, that's all um, yeah, anything, I think we need to get some other things around here just yeah. to... The desk, the desk definitely needs some, uh, some, desk adorn be, some yeah. adornment. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit plain at the it's moment. It's good yeah. okay. that. We're growing into it. We're yeah. growing into it. But yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, the response so far to the merch has been good. Yep. We'll have um, merch tents set up in no time. Some of that, we could be very commercially astute and dare I say it, uh, do we do competition well with the uh, merchandising division uh, very soon. So, yeah. perfect. So, guys, closing comments. Yeah, so I feel like uh, we've created a great opportunity to be able to showcase some of the great work Association is doing. In a way, that's not just a blog post mm. and it's it's going to be a little bit more engaging. Absolutely, we'd love to have you know people feeding back, mm -hmm. giving us some story ideas. Um, Andrew's done some great work investigating some of the feature articles and some of the associations from around the mm. world. We definitely want it to, to take that. Um, the, the next opportunity is to build that community around the show. And so when we uh, you know, launch the online community at associationsuccess.org, as many people getting involved mm. in that is really going to bring the show to life. Excellent. Yeah, I'm with you. It's constantly surprising to me just how big the association sector mm. is, both here in Australia and overseas, of course. So, you know, there's so many great stories out there. There's so many things, we'd lo great topics to talk about. Yeah. So really yeah. looking forward to uh, exploring them further in future episodes. Should be great. Okay, that brings us to the end. Thank you everyone for joining. Remember to log on and go to hashtag 60A to share your comments and your feedback and anything else that you really want to share. We'll take anything right now. Um, and also head online to the online community, associationsuccess.org, to share even more feedback with us and to watch other episodes. Remember, guys, that too much agreement kills a chat, and we'll see you next time.